Welcome to Knock Hill Racing Circuit for the Scottish Sports and Saloons Car Championship. Thank you very much Fiona, as we see the cars making the way round for their warm-up lap. Unfortunately, only five cars in this race. We've already lost Ron Cumming, so the Nemesis kit car has cried enough. Uh, great shame that we're not going to see Ron out there. Very, very fast car, and uh, hands down, it would win the race by quite some distance. Unfortunately, we don't see... We don't seem to have Ron. Yeah, something's befallen him on the outlap. And uh, what we do have is five cars on track. We've got Will Robson, Paul Rankin, Ollie Mortimer, Paul Wilson, and Fraser James. And there goes Will Robson through the shop. Ollie Mortimer punching way above his weight in that little mini, as he always does. His good friend Paul Wilson, 27. There's Paul Rankin in the Westfield, and Fraser G at the back. Now, Fraser G, he's uh, going to be on his own this week, so there won't be any. Hopefully, no body contact with him and Stuart Buck and his good friend who's not here this weekend. But a 12-lap race in front of us here at Knock Hill Racing Circuit. And we wait for the guys to get up onto the start line. And we shall be starting the race. Will Robson, well, he should be hands down favourite for this one. But who knows, what can Paul Rankin do in his little Westfield aero? Has he got enough pace he can uh, possibly put a fly in the ointment for R Will Robson? Again, Ollie Mortimer there. Very extravagant driving style in the Mini, and Ollie always has had an extravagant driving style. He was looking for more competition, he was looking for more Minis to come into this class. They are out there, but unfortunately, they're not here this weekend. But we do know that Paul Wilson can put up a good fight, as can Fraser Jameson. So let's see how this one unfolds. We get a green flag at the back of a very short grid. Green flag there. Normally, the marshal's down where the ambulance is, but green flag off he walks. And let's wait, we get the five second board goes out. That's a complete grid there. We have lost Ron coming before the start of this. So we have a full component of lights. Who's gonna get the jump down towards the first corner? Away we go, it's lights out and it's good clean starts from absolutely everybody. As we go past the marshals in the pit wall and down towards the first corner, Will Robson blasts away from Paul Rankin. Paul comes through the top of Duffus, slots himself into a nice second place with Ollie Mortimer trying to go back up the inside of him, but uh, trying to go up the inside, showing him a bit of a car there. You can see Paul having a look at his mirror. Rankin holds that position just now as they go through the chicane, but Ollie Mortimer and Paul Wilson all over the back of the little Westfield. Aero Fraser Jameson just off the back. The little uh, Westfield Aero quick on the straights, but these minis are extremely fast around the corner, so probably see a gap open up as they come round towards the hairpin between Mortimer and Rankin. You see Rankin pulls away on the straight there and watch Mortimer, he will home up on the brakes in a big way. And through the twisty sections, he shall also close in. But I've got to say, over the course of the race, you would expect that Paul Rankin in the Westfield Aero will pull away quite a bit from Oliver Mortimer, as over the crest goes your race leader, Will Robson, in second place, Paul Rankin just now. And then these two minis very close together, Mortimer and Wilson. So they know each other inside out, basically. They've carted together since they were kids. As we see c contrasting styles of getting the minis through Duffus as Paul Rankin understeers his way through McIntyre's. They're the two minis with the back end of the cars just jumping out there. We saw Ollie having a big slide through the top of Duffus. And then we saw Paul Wilson jumping over the apex gear, all action, like a touring car. So two completely different styles and two Decent lap times, two very similar lap times coming away with it at the end as Fraser Jameson, the last car on the track, comes through just now. And uh, yeah, a great shame that we don't have many more Scottish saloons and sports cars in this championship race. But we hope to have more back on the September meeting. The September meeting is usually quite a busy meeting. Sometimes people are away on holiday during the middle of the year, so that's what we're finding out just now as Mortimer and Molson go over the crest of the hill. In hot pursuit is Fraser Jameson, but everybody is chasing this man here, car number 89, Will Robson. And Will making this look pretty good so far as he goes down Butcher's big jump off the kerb and then over the chicane. And just listen to that car as he goes up the back street. You can hear the turbocharger in that car working overtime as Mortimer in pursuit of Paul Rankin. He's not going to give up, is he? No, he's not going to give up at all as both the minis go through the chicane carrying a whole heap of speed and then up through Clark Corner. Just depends how much the minis or how long the minis will uh, look after their tyres before they start to overheat them or cook them, as the saying goes. See how much degradation they've got. That's a good word for the commentary just now, as we see Jameson coming in towards the hairpin. 
in his car. Fraser's first year of circuit racing, we should say that. He come from Superlap Scotland, and he had a, a good feeder series there. A couple of years in that, he won the championship in the E-Class, and then decided that it was time for him to make the move from the Superlap era. Wow, look at that, from the Superlap racing up and towards the main circuit racing with the Scottish Motor Racing Club, and that was Ollie Mortimer there coming through the top of Duffy's dip there, and that looked absolutely sensational. That car completely sideways over the apex. Great bit of car control, that. And uh, we say that with a little smile, because if that goes horribly wrong, Ollie will be in a whole heap of trouble, but he's a man who who knows how to drive these minis just like that. So he'll be absolutely fine. Into the hairpin though comes your race leader. Will Robson in his home-built Focus. It's an extremely fast car and it's had a, it's had a huge amount of modifications to it. Sounds great over the hill there. Into Duff as he comes. Over the kerbs he goes down through Leslie's, named after David Leslie, then into McIntyre's. Rankin comes through, let's catch Ollie Mortimer, hopefully. Note the camera follows Paul Rankin, let's hope he gets an apex this time. That's better, he'll be happy with that. Former, we should say about Paul Rankin as well, former Superlap Scotland king of the hill. As Mortimer just, um, yeah, just for giggles really, and then throws a, <laughs> throws a thumbs up towards either the marshals or our cameraman who must be absolutely loving this. As Mortimer out there having fun, put on a decently, or not just a decently, just a great show in the Scottish Saloon and Sports Car Championship. And really that's tickled the commentator a bit actually as he goes through Clark Corner there, all under control, but uh, <laughs> sliding through the apex of McIntyre's then giving a thumbs up towards the cameraman. That's what we like about car number 70, Ollie Mortimer, as Paul Wilson goes up the inside though. Paul Wilson's had enough of Ollie Mortimer's monkeying around. He throws the number 27 car up the inside. They're side by side up the straight. I can imagine there's going to be some waving there. Mortimer has had the cut back and he takes the position back now as they go over the crest of the hill onto the podium. Now, hang on to your hats. What's going to happen here is we're going to Duffus. Yep, standard Ollie Mortimer. Through he goes. And I would imagine the same into McIntyre. Will we get the locks up this time, Ollie? Well, it's not far away from it, but it's a lot more controlled that time. Paul Wilson watching this. Was, this will just be annoying, Paul. So you're only sliding about that much in front of him. Normally that would uh, slow you down considerably and uh, it would upset your car, probably cook your tyres pretty quickly. But as a driver, it's uh, absolutely great fun. And Ollie giving Paul Wilson... Let's hope Paul Wilson has an onboard camera because we get some cracking footage from that throughout the course of this weekend. As Will Robson crosses the line in his... Ford Focus RS, a 2.5 litre engine in that, and in the B1 class for him, and Paul Rankin, well, he's got a 2 litre engine, he goes into B2 in his class. These cars that are 53, up the hill, the minis, they've gone, three of them, Mortimer, Wilson and Jameson, as we hold on to our breath for Paul Rankin, it's the next car we want to see coming through here, and uh, I'm pretty sure the cameraman will catch Ollie Mortimer coming through there, as through the chicane goes... Paul Rankin looks very much in control just now. As well, Robson comes through Clark Corner, chalks off another lap as we catch back up with Ollie Mortimer. Now, Ollie's starting to either calm down his style, but it didn't look like it there, but he is starting to put a bit of a distance into himself and Paul Wilson. So whether Paul's maybe made a little mistake on one of those laps, and it appears Fraser Jameson is falling off the back of those guys as well, as the leader crosses the line. Second place ranking goes across the line as well, and we wait for these two guys coming through third and fourth. Ollie Mortimer, former mini racer in the Celtic Speed Mini Cooper Cup, and also for a, a, formerly a Formula Ford racer, Formula Ford Z-Tech back in the day, and he also raced the XR2s as well, so Ollie's been around for a long, long, long time, actually. Wow, good grief as he goes through the top of Duffy's dip there. Didn't think he was getting that one back. And, uh, oh, this is great to watch, it really is. It's making a pretty uneventful race seem very eventful. <laughs> Ollie Mortimer goes through the chicane, and that over the top of Duffus was absolutely sensational. That looked like it was a rear-wheel drive car, and it also looked like there was absolutely nothing left in Oliver Mortimer there. You could imagine, if you're a race car driver, he would have been absolutely flat to the boards on the accelerator pedal trying to make sure that thing pulls him straight again down the hill and never ever lift off in a front wheel drive car once it gets to that point as Ollie comes into the airplane with Paul Wilson right behind him. This again will just be infuriating that number 27 driver Paul Wilson 
he will not be liking all this sideways experience that he's seen in front of him. Paul knows exactly how to do it, but as they go over the crest of the hill and under the bridge, quite rightly, our director's following this as they come in towards Duffy's Dip. What do we get this time? Oh, that's uh, very, very well behaved. And Paul Wilson, he actually takes a hunk of sausage curb at the top of the hill there. So trying to carry as much speed as he possibly can as the cars dip down through butchers and over the crest of the chicane. These minis, great fun. A little bit faster than the other Mini Coopers that will have the Celtic Speed Mini Cooper Cup. These cars run about three, four seconds a lap faster sometimes, uh, depending on how Oli Mortimer wants to drive the car. If he drives it the way he is, he's not that much faster, really, to tell you the truth. But 58.1, he done that on his second lap of the race. Paul Wilson also on his second lap done a 58.7. So through the hairpin, both those guys come. Accelerate up the main straight. Paul Wilson probably feeling quite hungry looking at the back of the Jolly Restaurant sticker on the back of Wally's car just now as they go over the crest of the hill and we come past the spectators in towards Duffy's Dip again carrying Paul Wilson in frame through goes Mortimer and Ollie's really I wonder if he gave himself a little fright that last time <laughs> that he was completely sideways or did he get a tailing off from the pit wall as the guys make their way down through the twisty complex off Knock Hill here and over the crest of the chicane. Ollie looks like he's actually having to try quite hard now. Paul Wilson looks like he has got the measure of him on lap times. At the front, it's still Will Robson way out in front from Paul Rankin. There he goes there. And over the crest of the hill down towards Duffy's Dip. That was perfect timing as we follow Will over the crest of Duffy's Dip, he goes. Let's focus RS. Homemade car, or not homemade, home built, home modified is the right word possibly. Not homemade, that sounds like paper mache and egg cartons, but it's certainly not paper mache and egg cartons as we catch back up with the two guys battling for third place. And really, this is the only battle we have on uh, on track as Ollie goes over the top of the fist. There we go, back to his usual antics. He's got a, a second or so gap on Paul Wilson, so he realizes he can now throw the car sideways. Tried to throw sideways there, then the front didn't want to bite, and the front pushed on quite a bit going through. You can see the car actually twisting itself under protest for Ollie saying where he wants the car to go, and the car actually deciding if it could go there. But that massive, massive black line through the apex of Duffus will live long, one would imagine, in this race, and it'll probably be for the next three or four races as well. As we pick up with Fraser G, car number 89, 83, sorry. 89 being Will Robson, Fraser Jameson. Fastest lap for Fraser, a minute point three just now. As the two battling minis and a lock up from Paul Wilson there. Locked up the inside right wheel as he goes in towards the hairpin. And that's going to cost him a little bit of time all the way up the straight. As we wait on the guys coming in towards Duffus. And will the skid mark still be there? That's what we want to know. We'll find out in a second or so. Yes, it certainly is. <laughs> and Ollie not adding to him this time. And you can see just how much time Paul Wilson lost with that little mistake of the hairpin. Making a mistake of the hairpin just hurts your momentum all the way up the next straight. And unfortunately for Paul Wilson, the gap now out to around about a second and a half, two seconds as they go through the first split. But never mind that because here comes your race leader up towards a very well-deserved checker flag. Out goes the checker flag. He's knocked it off considerably at the end of the race here. Will Robson from Paul Rankin, 3.3 seconds being the difference as we wait for Mortimer and Wilson to come in. Here they come. Only Mortimer will take the final step on the podium and he'll take also class honours in the Mini Cooper R53. Through he comes the hairpin and uh, it's been a very entertaining race. Thank you very much, Ollie. Can we have more of that later on? He crosses the line in third, fourth for Wilson and fifth will be Fraser Jameson. But let's hand down to Fiona for some post-race in the Park Fermi, Fiona Wallace, take it away. Well done, that was quite a, a quiet race. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, it was, it's a shame there wasn't any more competitors, to quote my friend Ollie over there. Um, no, it was a quiet race, there's been a couple of breakages in qualifying this morning, which was unfortunate. I had a few technical problems, I didn't think I was going to get out in the race, but I did in the end, thankfully, so just went well, car held together well, and started first and finished first. Can't I think complain. we'll see those other cars back out tomorrow. I'm hoping so. I think Ron's going to be out in a different car tomorrow. Um, he's going to have another one shipped down from up north, so hopefully he'll be out.
So as we see the cars coming through Duffus Dip for this there outlap, let's have a look back at yesterday's result, the Saturday result here at the David Leslie Tribute Meeting. The Super Touring Car Festival, Will Robson was the winner in that number 89 Ford Focus RS, a two and a half litre car. His fastest lap was a 56.6 second lap. Paul Rankin, car number 62, was the Westfield Aero. He come through in second place. And in the three minis, Mortimer Wilson and Jameson all making up the rest off the grid. And yesterday's fastest lap of the race was Will Robson. And you may notice at the back of the grid, we do have a new car. Yay, say the fans. It's the BMW Z4 and Ron Cumming has had it shipped down from up north, as Will Robson said. So that car and Ron Cumming have a little bit of history because that was the car that Ron accidentally clipped passing while he was trying to overtake at the hairpin going reverse direction which caused the nemesis to veer onto the grass and then have a pretty violent barrel roll through the gravel trap at the hairpin in the reverse direction meeting earlier on in the year. So Ron's got a good bit of history with that car. Unfortunately, the wrong kind of history. Full complement of red light, so and away we go down towards the first corner for the first team of Askin. And let's hope everybody can get through the corner because we don't want to lose any cars. And it's Paul Rankin who pulls alongside and across the front of Will Robson. We didn't see that one coming. Look at that. Paul Wilson goes past Ollie Mortimer. Mortimer tries to come back up the inside, but there's no room for him to do it there. Through behind Ollie Mortimer's Fraser Jameson. And then that looked like Ron Cumming locking up at the back. And where's he gone? Where has Ron Cumming gone? <laughs> We saw him look up there, he is in the distance, so obviously Ron's had a little bit of a spin there, maybe over-rotated the rear axle of the car, and it round it went. So a great shame for him, so he's pretty much out of the picture straight away, but at least Ron's on the grid. Look at these three minis though, Fraser Jameson trying to go around the outside of Paul Wilson, as Mortimer's now got back ahead of him as they go up the main straight, so race and game well and truly on. Well, Robson hits the front, he's had a technical problem himself, so let's hope that that won't rear its ugly head today. I was quite surprised to hear him admit to that after the race as Mortimer goes over the top of Duffus. Paul Wilson much more, uh, shall we say, reserved and in control. Yeah, there's a skid marks on the track from Ron Cumming. So you can see, looked like he did loop the car around there and thankfully didn't get it beached in the gravel and has got away from McIntyre's as Robson goes away ranking now ahead of Ollie Mortimer but falling back towards the clutches of that number 70 Mini that are 53 now is Paul Rankin in a is Paul Rankin in a bit of trouble here actually because he's dropped off quite considerably from Will Robson as we see Will coming in towards the hairpin through come the three minis one two and then a gap back to Fraser G but he comes through and he'll be pretty happy that he has managed to hold a good bit of pace here at the beginning of this Scottish Saloon and Sports Car Championship race race number two for these guys Another 12 lap race, as we see in towards Stuff is Dip, the race leader Will Robson. That car last year had an anti-lag system on it, and every time he changed gear in the main street, in the commentary box, it felt like the windows were getting attacked by anti-aircraft fire. So he's kind of changed how it works this year, and the loud bangs have, well, thankfully gone, much to the, the commentator's delight. The car seems to have gained a fair bit of speed though, and it's lost the bang, so, up the back street we go just now, was Paul Rankin pulling across the inside there? But Ludwig Paul was pulling over, but no, he's not. He still goes through Clark Corner, getting caught hand over fist through the twisty sections by not one, not two, but three minis. Because Fraser Jameson could also be involved in that just now as into the hairpin comes your race leader, Paul Rankin, in second place. And then the rest of the guys all coming through and through out the hairpin. Accelerating up the main street. Will Robson already gone and checked out. And in second place, Paul Rankin sits nice and pretty. And Paul Rankin, well, he knows how to win races, that's for sure. He has done it before, as we wait to see Ollie Mortimer coming through. That's what the camera's going to pick up, surely. There he comes, and that's, uh, that's pretty good style for Ollie Mortimer, actually. Can't complain with that. Paul Wilson comes through. Wow, Paul Wilson using a whole heap of care at the bottom and then the next corner, McIntyre's, and then deciding that he's not just happy with that. He's going to use some gravel at the exit of McIntyre's, and obviously he's been watching Ollie Mortimer and deciding that, OK, you can kind of do what you like in these races, <laughs> sideways or whatever, but kicking up the gravel, uh, a fair bit of gravel getting kicked up as well 
by Paul Walsh. You won't want to do that too much because you start getting your tyres dirty before you know it. You can Oh no, that's Will Robson. Never mind your tyres getting dirty. That's Will Robson. And that looks terminal as he pulls up the trioval. Big, big puffs of smoke. And that car is out of the race. So Will Robson looks like we're going to have the first DNF of the weekend for him. And that could be him out for the rest of the weekend. That didn't look good as Will stopped beside the marshals. He's down beside the front right there. So shake of the head possibly threw a hand up in almost submission there and uh, that's a great shame for him as he was well and truly in control of the race here now that lets Paul Rankin take the lead of the race in the Westfield Aero a little two litre car getting chased down constantly by Ollie Mortimer and by Paul Wilson Fraser Jameson just off the back of that we need to mention Ron Cummings still running albeit some, uh, some distance off the back after a spin on the opening lap of the race down at McIntyre's down at turn three. Great shame for him. We see some spectators walking through the back of the shot at the hairpin here. Hopefully they're enjoying the, the good spectator vantage points, which you can have here at Knock Hill. And they're watching Paul Rankin just now doing a bit of a demonstration display, and Paul will be loving this. He won't like the fact that Will Robson's gone out of the race with a mechanical issue, but there you go. He's going to inherit a win by the looks of things as the indicator is on Ron Cummings' car. So Ron's obviously been quite exuberant with the steering wheel at some point and uh, hit the indicator on as he takes a whole hunk of sausage scale through Clark's and heads towards the hairpin in the BMW Z4. That car slots in to the A3 class. Loads and loads of classes in the Scottish Saloons and Sports Car Championship. But today we only have cars from the B2 class, the R53 and the A3 class still running. Well, Robson's B1 car, unfortunately, retired in a cloud of rather expensive smoke, shall we say? Well, let's see if he makes it back out for the next one. If he was down looking at the front of the car, there is a fair chance that he might be able to fix that if it's not from the middle of the engine. So let's see if uh, well, Robson's mechanical skills can be put to the test once again and can he repair that car as Mortimer comes into view through Duff's dip. And then Leslie's Ollie doesn't use half as much a kerb Paul Wilson does at the bottom of the hill there. Paul Wilson really does abuse that care, but Ollie's decided not to play in this race. You could see he's just pulled away quite handsomely from Paul Wilson. 8.3, 8.4 seconds the gap from Paul Rankin back to Ollie Mortimer just now. So Mortimer quite far behind, as you can see him at the hip in there. So Paul Rankin will not be worried too much about Ollie Mortimer. But then there seems to be about seven or eight seconds as well between the two guys in the minis, which wasn't there yesterday. So has there some changes happened overnight in the camp for the Mortimer or Paul Wilson tried to tweak the car to make it faster? And as you sometimes do, you tweak the car and you make it considerably slower. So that's a, a bit of a nightmare. He'll be looking for the next race to try and change that. As Ron Cumming comes through McIntyre's in the Z4 down and over the crest of the chicane. Ron still driving it within an inch of its life and considering it's not his car, he's doing a cracking job in that car. Currently lapping his fastest lap of the race, uh, a minute point two. And his second fastest lap, a minute point three. So Ron coming absolutely on the limit in that car, driving it as hard as it possibly can go. The leader's gone through there, second place man, Ollie Mortimer going through. Through Clark Corner, the back of the car, just looking a little bit lively, but up towards the checker flag comes the race leader and soon to be winner. Crosses the line on a trailing throttle in his Westfield Aero. Paul Rankin wins the race. Second place for Ollie Mortimer. He comes through. There's Paul Wilson in the distance, going by the, by the advertising boards up towards a checker flag that's uh, getting just held out from in the breeze. Will he get a wave? Yes, he deserves a wave. Thank you very much. So let's hand down to Fiona as we wait for Fraser Jameson and Ron Cumming to both come through. Let's hand down to Fiona Wallace, who is ready for some post-race. We won't be hearing from Will Robson this time. Will we hear from Paul Rankin? Fiona? Well done, Paul. Bit of a lonely race there for you. Yeah, Will Robson's car obviously let go. Uh, we've been pushing for it all weekend. Had a few toe-offs yesterday. Um, alternator problems, battery alternator not charging the battery, so we'll try to charge it by 240 in between races. Um, I new suspension, new anti roll bars, uh, new suspension, frame nitron, um, try to dial it in. 
we're, we're, get, we're, we're getting there. It felt a lot better. The back end was good. Um, and what kind of lap times do you do in your car? Uh, we've done a personal best yesterday, a 56.2, which is okay. Uh, quite a wee bit away from what we were used to doing in the, in the old Subaru. Um, but um, yeah, we're getting there. Eh? It's, it's just probably got, we've never dynoed it, it's probably about 200 horse. So it's not got huge horsepower against like Will's car or that. But yeah, we're pushing it through the corners. We've got a couple of mods that we come to do it before we kind of go for anywhere horsepower. Let's see if we can drive the wheels off it first. But yeah, enjoying it. So you're hoping for another race win today? Yeah, well, it's a shame because I'm kind of be there myself, set for the, the, these crazy minis. <laughs> but uh, I hopefully I didn't see any of them. Eh? Not really too keen on them. No. There's not much difference between mini and banger racing. <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> Paul Rankins, a um, <laughs> little bit cheeky there towards the minis, but I think he's seen that very much tongue-in-cheek stuff. But uh, we'll see how we get some of this one. Minis and banger racing. They couldn't be further apart if they possibly tried. Paul Rankin, thank you very much. But a congratulations on that win there as we saw him just trying to stay away from those crazy guys, as he put it. And look at that. Is that not a great sight? Car number eight to nine, back on circuit, going through McIntyre's. It's Will Robson back in the hunt so let's see how he gets on here his mechanical skills as i did say have been put to the test and well will it hold together that's one thing fixing a problem is one thing but making sure it's fixed and reliable is a completely other thing as the pace car comes through clark the lovely john clark led car leads paul rankin ollie mortimer paul wilson fraser g fraser jameson and then we have got run coming with at the back and that's a little bit of a large gap. Let's hope there's nothing wrong or untoward with that car. Will Robson does come through. So a lot of warming the tyres up here. This, the last race for the Scottish Saloons and Sports Car Championship. Their third race of the weekend. Another 12 lap race. And let's see if we can get all of the cars to the finish. All six of them. And let's hope we get a lot more cars at the next round in September for these guys to all race against. Lights appearing on the bridge. As we look up, we get a full complement of lights. Who's going to get the jump down towards the first corner? Watch for Will Robson because that car should have heaps more horsepower than the minis in front of him. He's already passed Mortimer on the run down on Jameson. But it's passed Jameson very quickly. He didn't get past Mortimer. He was blocked in there. Paul Rankin leads in towards Duffy's dip. Will Robson has got ahead in the second place. Just now side by side coming and Jameson over the crest of the hill. But as we pick leaders up at the exit of McIntyre, Paul Wilson snuggles up behind his good buddy, Ollie Mortimer. And that's about as close as he will want to let the gap, or as close as he wants to get to him, maybe. But he won't want to be any further, than, further back than that. As we go up towards Clark Corner, through they come. Wilson right underneath the exhaust and the rear bumper of Ollie Mortimer's number 70 car just now. As there's a change of lead at the hairpin. Look at that, Will Robson powered up alongside, but brake later. Has he got the apex? Nope. He missed that by at least a week and a half. Rankin slid the arrow Westfield up the inside, but then it's a horsepower battle up the straight. And Will Robson should take that, but that little Westfield's not slow. Paul Rankin's car hanging in there as much as he possibly can over the crest of the hill. But all things said and done underneath the Beatsons Building Supply Bridge, Will Wilson, in fact Rankin, sorry, has to settle for second place. As Will Robson does take the lead, the two minis come through as they would do, as ever, the crazy guys as Paul Rankin called them. But this is a new championship, and let's hope we get some more cars in this so it can bolster the grids throughout the course of the year. Up the back straight, the guys go. And in towards Clark Corner, Fraser Jameson ahead of run coming. As Will Robson comes through with, on his tail, Paul Rankin and Mortimer, and Wilson still glued firmly together. Cars trying to stay out the gravel on exit of the corner and doing a decent job of it. Oh, somebody kicked up a little bit of gravel in the distance, I have to say that. As through comes Ollie Mortimer and Paul Wilson. So we saw Mortimer in race number one being very, very extravagant, throwing the car sideways and ultimately slowing himself down quite a bit. Race two, Ollie changed his style. He kept it very much in line, neat and tidy, and absolutely disappeared up the road from Paul Wilson. If you have a quick look at our sheets, there was a whole 10 seconds between those guys. In fact, 11 seconds come the end of the race. So let's see how this one unfolds. Let's see what Mortimer's plan of attack is. And let's see if Paul Wilson has managed to make that mini a little bit quicker via 
the superb setup that he could maybe throw at it. Leader through chicane. Second place goes through the chicane, now over the crest of the hill and into our view up the back straight. The two minis coming through, and Paul Wilson just as keen to get through that chicane as Ollie Mortimer. There comes Fraser J. And Ron coming as well. Ron flying in the BMW. This race the BMW Z4, which he had to borrow from up north, as we heard Will Robson saying in one of the earlier races, the Saturday race, when he heard that Ron didn't make it to the end. There has been a, a few other mechanical failures, but uh, thankfully, these guys on track in the sunshine just now, all holding it together as we go up the main street to click off another lap here at Knock Hill. The Mortimer and Wilson battle a couple of seconds or about a second and a half between them just now. As your leader comes into view, followed by Paul Rankin in second place. Are we waiting on Ollie Mortimer? Yes, we are. Hang on to your, heat, your hats here. And that was very much in control. Very much in control. As through comes Paul Wilson. Still kicking up that dust on the inside at the bottom of Leslie's there. So using quite a lot of curb as he goes through there. And through the chicane, both these guys go. Fastest lap of the race for Ollie Mortimer just now. 58-0. Uh, 58.027, he did that in the second lap of the race. And a 58.3 for Paul Wilson, he did that in the second lap of the race as well. So those guys lapping within three tenths of a second. Now, if you imagine a tenth of a second, that's what it takes you to blink. So it's absolutely nothing between them on lap times. But over the course of a race, you could just see how it starts to eke out. And it's doing that in the favour of Ollie Mortimer. As we pick up with the guys going through the top of Duffus once again. And then we pick up again with Paul Rankin, watching his style as he comes through in front of the marshals and the spectators. The number 62, Westfield Aero, the two-litre engine in that car, we've said again, it's in the B2 class. And the classes we have on display this weekend, B1 for Will Robson, B2 for Paul Rankin, and also run coming in the B1 class. And then the R53 Mini class, so only three classes of cars available for the Scottish Saloon and Sports Car Championship as the leader comes in towards the hairpin, and that would be the one and only Will Robson. And he comes through and makes a, a decent exit from the corner, he accelerates up the main straight, and goes on to form and try another lap. Fastest lap for your race leader just now, 55.5, done that the third lap of the race. Last lap round actually was a 55.6, so lapping very, very consistently as Will Robson. Paul Rankin's fastest lap of the race, a 56.3 second lap. And he done that just on the last lap as well. So that's good going for him. Everybody's setting their quickest laps off the race. Oh, dear, oh, dear, though. Not run coming. He's headed for the pit lane. There, that happened very much. It was shot quite quickly, and he leaves the pit lane again. So was that a drive through for run coming? Or was there a very, very quick inspection of that car in the pit lane by the pit crew? And then telling him to get on his way back up to speed. As through the hairpin comes Will Robson, car number 89, accelerates up the steep hill at Knock Hill. Past the finish line there, the start line at the crest of the hill. So start and finish line in two separate places here at Knock Hill Racing Circuit. As you do find that at quite a lot of circuits, the finish line is right in front of the timekeepers. And the timekeepers hut at Knock Hill Racing Circuit, just as you come into pit entrance. There has to be a direct line of sight between the timekeepers and the finish line, just in case... They need to be a judge of fact. Through the chicane, now there's bits of car, or is that bits of floppy bollard? Well, Ollie Mortimer's in the race, so I would imagine that's a bit of a floppy bollard, and wow, as Ollie comes through the top of Duffus, thank goodness he started this again to make this race seem a little bit more exciting, shall we say, as he throws the back of the car in towards McIntyre's. Paul Wilson comes through as well. Paul will see Ollie starting to drive this and think, hang on, is this a chance for me to possibly catch up with him and get in the mix and see how we get on as they fire their way up the back straight? And Will Robson is now 17 seconds ahead as he gets to the hairpin. 17 seconds ahead of those guys battling away in the minis. Through comes Paul Rankin, not 17 seconds ahead, but did that sound a little bit funny? The Paul Rankin's car just not sound perfect as he goes past us now. Nope, sounded absolutely fine. Dodgy ear on the commentator, we'll uh, have a look at that later on maybe. As down through the lowest part of the circuit and over the crest of the chicane. It's a constant climb all the way back up to the start finish line. As yeah, that's it. That a ah, boy, Ollie. Throws the back end of the car sideways through the top of Duffus. And thank you very much. 
a rear wheel drive mini, maybe not front wheel drive mini that has smoke coming off the back rear wheels because he's going that sideways as he goes through the corner. The commentator's got sore cheeks from smiling. 10 out of 10 for Oli Mortimer. Buy that man a can of something fizzy, please. Fraser J comes through, probably wonder what all the skid marks are on the track are from. But they're from Oli Mortimer. Run coming back out there, but obviously having a lock up as he goes in because there's a little bit of smoke following him. As in towards the top of Duffus goes Will Robson. And Will Robson not far away from coming up to lap Ron coming. But you've got to remember Ron's been in the pit lane. He's been through with some sort of technical issue. As Ollie Mortimer comes over the crest of Duffus again, chased hard by Paul Wilson. And Paul Wilson will not be liking this as sideways. Cameraman almost missed it there. He should have known it was coming. So the cameraman did manage to just catch Ollie. Wonder if you can do it sushi king. You get sideways through there, Ollie? Well, decent enough. But up towards the checker flag comes that car, number 89. It's Will Robson in his Ford Focus RS, a two and a half litre car in the B1 class. He takes the victory. That's out of a possible three. He takes two wins. And Paul Rankin comes through the hairpin. And how far behind is Paul Rankin here? As he comes up to the line, the seconds ticking away. Paul Rankin crosses the line in his Westfield Aero. 17 seconds was the gap between Will Robson and Paul Rankin. And Ollie Mortimer is going to take the victory in the Mini Cooper R53 battle over Paul Wilson. Through, the, through those guys, both come. And then Fraser Jameson will be the last, or the next car through run coming will be the actual last car to come through. But let's hand down to Fiona Wallace for some post-race interviews to catch up with the guys and find out how they got on in the Scottish Saloons and Sports Car Championship. So Ollie, another win, another podium, you must be happy. Yeah, uh, keep the sponsors happy, Edinburgh Watch Company, Bugless Glasses and Edinburgh Remaps, but um, nah, I'm happy with that. It's, uh, Paul kept me honest for the first lap and then after that I uh, just got a few qualifying sort of tight laps in and kept it nice and smooth, pulled away and then the BS light came on at the end again and uh, Paul started to catch me but by that time it was, it was quite a manageable gap so now nah, it was quite an uneventful race but uh, it's a great weekend here thanks to all the marshals and all the Knock Hill staff and everyone for all the hard work, uh, it's much appreciated. Good, well, perfect, thanks very much, and we'll see you next time out. See you next time, cheers. You must be happy after that disappointment from this morning. I, um, yeah, broke a wishbone in race two, three laps in from leading the race. It was disappointing, but these things happen. You hit a carb, took the corner a bit too uh, tight, but got it repaired uh, in the break between races. Got out there starting from the back and got to the front by the end of first lap, so I was really happy with that and just maintained the gap and came home with a... With a win. It's quite a friendly paddock here at Knock Hill because I know you've borrowed Minimax's um, welder. Yeah, um, I had Andy who works uh, in the Fiesta garage. He borrowed Minimax's welder to weld my wishbone to get me back out in the race. And you know what? The, the four years I've been racing, it's always been the same. Um, there's always someone to lend a hand or give, up, give you a hand or whatever. And I've been the same. I'll help anyone fix anything on their car if I can. So, aye, really friendly bunch. Are you back out in September? Yes, I will be, I hope. More wins in the card? I'm hoping so. I'm hoping for a few more entries, a bit more of a challenge, but I am looking for some more wins. I've got a taste for it now.